Okay, traders, welcome to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. Before we get going, just want to do a quick audio and sound check, make sure that uh, you guys can hear me loud and clear. Testing audio, one, two, three. If you can hear me, if you can type a Y into the chat box, that'd be helpful. And we are going to get going here with this week's session. Before we start the presentation, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most importantly for uh, today's presentation, it's important to understand that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Those of you who are here for the first time, brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. I essentially have a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately at that stage, day gambling. And after some early beginners rough, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginners luck ran out and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions and giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. Say that was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading, sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years was a time during which I upped not just my technical gain in terms of researching, developing, and extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets, in the form of losing trades. Once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading is simply a numbers game in which you're playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus on the next 100 trades, because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I have also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I am resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to tip mill clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos and there's a share through the Tickmill Trading View account. I also run Tickmill's rapidly growing E-mini strategy group where I post a daily video outlining my pre-market trading plan for the S&P cash trading session in New York. I give my bias for the trading day ahead, specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over 2,500 points of profit since we launched the group last year. Second Tickmill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The Tickmill Futures Telegram trading group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis I share in-depth insights, analysis and trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the New York Cash trading session, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the market and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. 
These sessions act as a platform, helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where it is I am coming from. Let's jump into the charts. What I would say before we get going here is, if you have any questions uh, with respect to any of the analysis I'm, I provide, if you just drop those into the chat box and I will uh, come back to those at the end of the session. Equally, if you have an instrument you want me to take a look at that I don't cover, uh, you can just uh, put that into the chat as well and I'll give you a view on uh, any of the instruments that's on the platform. Okay, so starting with the uh, E-mini S&P 500, we uh, are bullish. I've been bullish against this swing low at the 3740 area, currently holding swing long positions. Uh, and what I'm looking for now is a test up into this trend channel resistance, looking for 3960, uh, 39.70 to get tested. Uh, anticipate a pullback from there, but as long as we hold then above the monthly pivot, I'm looking for an extension to the target zone, the equality objective at 40.25 to 40.35. From there, I'll be watching for the potential for longer term uh, bears to step back in and, uh, and take another move to the downside. Well, what's important to remember is that heading into next week, uh, we have earnings season starting, and I'm anticipating that we can see some strength between now and then, uh, first releases coming out on the 13th and 14th of July. I think we've got a window here for this pop higher to develop. But what I'm anticipating is that we're going to see some weakness in earnings, and it's going to be the earnings, uh, earnings fears um, and the recession fears, obviously, that will potentially drive the next leg to the downside. So this is, um, ideally what I'd like to see is just testing this uh, 4025, 4035 area as we head into the back end of next week and earnings season commences. And then I think we're going to see uh, another leg of weakness. At this stage, only a break of the support here at the 3739 uh, would be a bearish development and would take us down immediately then to think about a test of the 3500 level. But for now, like I say, I'm positioned on the long side and I'm looking for, uh, for a further drift higher. Nikkei, similar story against this pivot swing low that we have in place here at the 11,348, we look for a test of the equality objective at 12,494. And bear in mind that also coincides, not in terms of time for corrections, this, if, if we do extend higher here, this would have been a slightly longer uh, corrective period. Equal really, let's just have a quick look here. <clears throat> Yeah, so this consolidation we've got at the moment is, is, in terms of time, not necessarily price, is longer than we've seen in, at any point in the current cycle to the downside. Uh, but from a price perspective, the minimum upside advance versus the prior corrections in this cycle gives us 12,430. So that coinciding with the equality objective. And again, then those earnings coming through, especially in the, some of these tech, uh, tech stocks, heavy uh, heavily reliant upon uh, the, the free money or the, the easy access to capital that we've seen uh, in recent years, um, I think we're going to see some weakness in tech earnings, and that's going to drive us for the next leg to the downside. Ultimately, I'm looking for a test of the 10,540 level in terms of this NASDAQ before we might put in a more meaningful base. Dow Jones, same idea here. We are looking for a test of the equality objective, which is sitting at 32,500. Bullish, uh, bullish setup at the moment here on this daily chart. So we're looking for a break of that monthly pivot here, 31,250. You can then be looking long and you can easily uh, see that 32,500 level tested before again, you may see the markets roll over at this stage. It would take a close back through 30,328 to open up the downside, and we'd be looking for a test below 30,000 into the 29,000 level in terms of the uh, Dow Jones. But like I say, for now, I'm anticipating a drift higher into next week. Russell, uh, still, this is, the, the, this is interesting. The Russell is the only equity index, uh, the US equity index, that hasn't tested 
It's a quality objective, and that quality objective sits at the weekly high volume node at 1570. So any closing breach of this, uh, this trend line support, you can see we've tested it a few times, the buyers have stepped in. Any closing breach would suggest that we're heading straight uh, directly to there. Um, and what I'm really to see a more, a more meaningful turn in the indices, we're going, I'm looking for this equality objective to be tested. Um, so any move at this stage in terms of the Russell is going to be considered. Let me draw this in for you. <clears throat> in a similar vein to the other indices at the moment, let's just go here. So versus the swing low that we have in place here, we have an equality objective at 1833. So I'm going to be paying close attention to that area as an opportunity to engage on the short side, targeting them. So this is the pattern I've been looking for. And then we want to see 1570s to 1560 on the downside. So this is a this is a, a decent opportunity developing, potentially develops next week as we get into this area, can lean against the trend channel resistance and bearish reversal patterns here in this 1830 to 1880 area. Opportunity then to trade for that downside target into the 1570. So decent 300 points of uh, potential there to the downside uh, to my mind. So that's one I'm gonna be watching closely. DAX <clears throat> took out the weekly trend line support where the buyers step in at the weekly high volume node. So profit taking for now. In terms of the DAX, we also have a potential double bottom here in play. Got a little bit of momentum divergence, nothing to, uh, nothing really to suggest that we're going to see anything more than a correction at this stage in the DAX. And we have the trend line coming in here. So what could we see here from the DAX? Well, what I anticipate is something like this. Trade up into the new monthly pivot. And then if sellers step in there, we have a downside equality objective now in the DAX at 11,129. So we can really see this roll over in terms of the DAX. So pay close attention to that pivot test again broadly coinciding with the upsides expected in these US indices. And then we'll see if, uh, if we're going to roll over and, uh, and make those new loans. Nikkei sitting, tested the weekly trend line a bunch of times, but we the, uh, the bids have been defending that area. And so if we can get a move back through 27,250, then we have an upside objective at the quality target 29,429. At this stage, only a close back through the swing low here, 25,530, will open the downside equality objective of 22,525. Moving into the currencies, the dollar index. I, was, I personally was looking for this uh, yearly R3 to provide some decent resistance. Uh, we didn't. Didn't get that. Um, and now we're thinking about a test into uh, the 107.30s as the next upside objective. And beyond there, we have the 127 extension of this uh, decline into the 20, uh, the January 21 lows. That comes in at 108. So this, uh, this is the next area I'm going to be watching um, to see if we can see a pullback at least in the dollar. And uh, I'm thinking about a move back into these prior uh, 104s. Um, but at this stage, dollar remains bid, safe haven bid. Um, but what, what, what's going to be interesting is to see how this dynamic between uh, the US indices and the dollar uh, plays out. I'm anticipating if we're going to see a, a pop higher in the US indices, we should start to see a little bit of short-term weakness in the dollar, but uh, certainly no trend reversal at this stage. Uh, to my mind, we, uh, we are pushing higher in terms of the dollar index for now. Euro, breaking down, looking now for a test of um, a parity, just below really, uh, for a wave five here to potentially complete. Um, and then we may see a more sustained corrective move back up to retest those 103.50s. But I would anticipate as we, if we get back up into that area, that will act as, uh, as, as resistance. And, um, and the, the pressure is again, as with the dollar on the upside, that, um, that the euro uh, trades to the downside. So 
I'm going to be watching for any, any first test of parity, um, as long as we get some momentum divergence. And uh, we certainly, if we bring this trend line over here, so any test into parity, as long as momentum divergence is maintained, we could see a short-term reversal. And like I say, a pop back up into that 103.50 area, and that will be the next decision point for the market. Sterling, obviously Boris Johnson resigning. We have a short-term pop in terms of the, uh, the, the currency pair on that news. But the reality now is that the BO, this, this move uh, in terms of the void of power, short-term power base in terms of the UK, is likely to leave the BOE in a very difficult position. They won't want to be raising rates into, uh, into this void of, of, of leadership in terms of the UK. So I'm seeing further weakness anticipated here in Sterling. The area I'm looking for now is a test of 117.50 area. From there, still see the potential then. That would broadly coincide with that dollar index getting up into that 107.50s, 108 area, and I think we can play a, a potential counter trend corrective move there. But uh, whilst we remain below this trend line resistance, 20, 121.50s, I just see the potential for further downside actually in terms of sterling. Uh, for now, we could certainly think about a test into 116 as, uh, as, a, as a legitimate downside objective for sterling. Dollar yen. Still holding the resistance area here at uh, 136.60s. I was anticipating we see one more pop higher here into the 138 area. And from there, we've got momentum divergence active and in play here. Then I'd be looking to fade that for a move back down into the 131.30s. I've been in and out personally th this trade, uh, trying, to, uh, trying to manufacture an entry, um, but I'm currently flat. And really, we've been looking for a move back through 130 to 430s to suggest that, uh, that we're heading to that 130 target zone. Part of the reason that we've seen, uh, the, the, the part of the reason for the difficulty in seeing any real traction in terms of the dollar yen trade are these, uh, these yields. We, uh, we tested that one, uh, the 3.5 percent, pulled back into the equality objective on the downside, 2.77 percent. And we've got a bullish reversal here. So if we get another a, another pop higher here in terms of yields, what I'd be anticipating is something like this. So back up into to test above that three point above that three percent level, and then a bigger corrective leg to develop, and that then would likely weigh on that uh, on the dollar yen. Euro yen is one that I'm running on the short side. Talked about this last week. And uh, I'm anticipating now that we get a move down to test into um, the 134 area. Certainly looks uh, certainly looks viable in terms of a, uh, a downside corrective target. And then from there, if we test and hold again that 134, I'd actually be looking to get involved on the long side in terms of the euro yen, uh, but short for now. Sterling yen. Looking for a test of the trend line support, weekly trend line support, somewhere back into this 157 area. Um, obviously, we've seen a bit of a pop in terms of sterling yen uh, on this, uh, this Johnson news this morning, but now we're starting to roll over again. So any loss really of that 159 sets up a move to test back into the 157, to my mind. And then again, again with all these yen pairs, because we've broken some new highs, whilst we hold trend support, I'm actually really looking to, uh, to get involved on the long side. Aussie Yen, um, looking again, I'm looking for this test of support here, back into the 86 area, and then from there I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns to, uh, to put on long positions, looking for new highs in terms of these, these Yens. Actually, I'm just going to draw that in, give me a target here. So if you think about the equality objective versus the swing structure here, it's an upside target of 103, well, 104, 103.90s, 104 in terms of Aussie yen. So when you move back into this support zone, bullish reversal patterns, and we're really looking on the long side. CAD yen, 
we didn't we have actually broken that support there so i've got a new setup here in play for the cadian let's draw this in for you so any test back into this 101 area is going to be an opportunity on the long side so i'll be thinking about a pattern like this to play out and then we're off again on the long side in terms of the CAD yen. So that's one to keep an eye on. Nothing immediate to do there. Similar story with Kiwi yen. We're looking now. We've got quality and trend line support coming in 7960s. That's going to, these these ones are 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 in in development basically in terms of the setup. But these are going to be the key areas to uh, to re-engage on the long side. Dollar CAD. As discussed last week, held the high volume mode again, and we have a target at, uh, at 132 here, 132.04 on the upside with, uh, with dollar CAD. Before then, I'd be watching the various reversal patterns to engage on the short side. And if we see this, if we, if we get this pop in terms of the, so these commodity FX we're gonna talk about in a second, uh, and that dollar index is testing that 108, 107.50 area, and that uh, could coincide nicely with a reversal, or at least a short-term reversal um, for the dollar. Aussie still waiting, 66.50 is the area we wanna see tested, and then we'll be looking for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. Kiwi dollar, any corrective move now back into this trend line resistance is an opportunity on the short side to my mind. So watching for a test of, 6280s, and then we look for lower again, and certainly can think about a test of 60 on the downside in terms of Kiwi, uh, Kiwi dollar. Euro also, this is one I was watching yesterday. I was looking for this trend line test and see if we've got bullish reversal. Looks like we're eroding it now. Big outside reversal on the weekly candle here, rejected from that prior support area, 50, uh, 153.30s. So any move back through at the pivot, 147.50s, opens a retest of the cycle lows down to 143. Gold, breaking down now nicely. And this, again, if we can get this, if we can get gold down into this 60, uh, 1670 area, I think this could be a, a significant opportunity uh, to build a longer term, long position in, in gold. Uh, so I'm paying close attention to that. 1670 is the area of interest. Watching for bullish reversal patterns there, and uh, we can do something on the long side. Silver came just shy of the quality objective. Have we tested? Yeah. So I'm looking for silver to test 1840. Ideally, we see gold down, testing its uh, quality objective. And then I'd be looking for uh, long positions in silver. Crude oil took out the trend line support. What I'm looking for now is any break of that low 95 sets up a test of 86.30 to 80, uh, sorry, 86.30 to 85.30. And then from there, watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side for another leg higher in terms of crude. I'm going to wrap this up with a look at Bitcoin and Apple for you. So Bitcoin, looking for a move through the trend line resistance here, 20,700 area. That should set up a test of this trend line resistance and the equality objective 22,500. From there, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns for another leg to the downside. We've got the quality objective, ABC target 12,185 on the downside. And again, with this, with, with, with this short term, shorter term strength we're seeing in terms of risk sentiment at the moment, that's what should see uh, Bitcoin pop into this resistance area for the next leg to the downside. I'm going to wrap this up with Apple. This is an earnings play I'm following. Like I was saying, I'm looking for near-term strength uh, to be faded into the earnings release. So Apple releases on the 28th of July. Ideally, I'd like to see it testing above, uh, just into that $150 level. From there, I'd be watching bearish reversal patterns, and I've got a 120 target on the downside for Apple before looking at, uh, at another corrected opportunity to the upside. And that wraps up the charts that I'm tracking and the opportunities I see in the coming sessions. Uh, are there any questions? I'll post into the chat um, for you the those that are interested in getting the um, daily trade plan that I post for the S&P 500. I've just put a link in there. You can just request access 
for that. And I'll also post the trading view link so you can follow along with, um, with my trade ideas on a daily basis. And if there aren't any questions, I am going to wrap this session up here. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.